You wouldn't believe the rotten seats I had last night. I can't wait to get these tickets. This is going to be great. Well, Jimbo, uh, we television personalities do have a little pool at the old box office here. So where are the seats at, Byron? Probably be so close we can get brushed back from the pitch. <laughs> I'm a good man. I believe you're holding three tickets for uh, Byron Day and two friends. Byron who? <laughs> it's, it's just a joke. He's only kidding. Byron Day? <laughs> B-Y-R-O-N-D-A-Y. Oh, great. Hey, we got him. Let's All go. Right, let's get in there. No huh? problem. All right. Boy, well, Byron, they really know how to take care of you around hey, here. Probably have box seats, yeah, huh? Yeah, probably. Hey, buddy. What? You want to buy a book? Oh, no, 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 thanks. No, no, no. Come, a here, book. come here. Come here. It's a special book. You ain't going to find this anywhere else. It's the unofficial baseball handbook. Hey, obviously, you don't know who we are. I'm Byron Day. This is Sean Mooney and Jim Scott. And we're the host of Inside Baseball. We know everything there is to know everything. about the game of baseball. <laughs> yeah, well, how about this? You know that? I didn't know you that. You know, I didn't know that. Hey, where'd you get that book? Hey, well, it don't matter where I got it. How many do you want? Guys? Three. Okay, I'll spring for it. Uh, give me three and keep the change. Thanks a lot, big spender. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Look Come at on, this. Come on, let's go inside. Oh, Look at that. You might be able to learn a few things from this book. the lighter side of baseball, it's the unofficial baseball handbook. Within its pages, you'll experience the great, the not so great, and those who had absolutely no business being in this tape at all. And now, leading off, here's Byron Day. I got a little time for the ball game. Let's see what the book says about the game itself. Ah, right here on page three. It says, our national pastime is the show of shows, because in the grand old game, anything goes. In olden days of glimpse of stockings was looked down as something shocking now heaven knows anything goes good authors too who once knew better words now only use for letter words writing
How are you doing? Tim, how are you? Hey, good to see you again. Good hey, to see you. I was reading in the unofficial baseball handbook. Where did you get that? Ah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I was reading that you wrote the chapter on how a baseball player is supposed to get dressed and look cool for a ball game. Is that right? Well, you're absolutely right, Tim. You've come to the right guy. You know, mm -hmm. when you're preparing for a major league ball game, there's three things you have to consider when you're getting dressed. First of all, you have to be comfortable in your uniform. Secondly, you have to be protected. Uh, protection is a very important thing. But third, and absolutely the most important, coolness. Yeah. Now, that's a thing we strive for in the major leagues. If you want to be a cool ball player, you have to dress cool. I have kind of, uh, and some ball players have idiosyncrasies about the way they dress and certain things that have to be worn. Now, for me, I have to wear my "I'm proud to be Polish" T-shirt. It's misspelled a couple well, of times. Well, a couple of times, yeah. but uh, they that get it really right. Has that's no good. Okay, high, yeah. but that's very important, and of course, has a nice, uh, snug look to that also. Well, next we'll probably go to our. Game uniform, oh, game jersey. Okay. Well, actually, no. I yeah. like to put on the. Uh, I like to wear a dicky because you know you have the, uh, the red. Want me to put this on? Yeah, go on, go on. Okay, yeah, yeah, this is right. very cool. Okay. okay. Now you, you have, have the red sleeve. The midriff now too. This is important. Right? Well, yes, it's very because okay. you know you don't want any bulges over here yeah. around your uh, midsection. Because yeah. well, your pants you're... are so tight r right now, you can hardly <laughs> breathe. <laughs> it is. You can't get anything else so. in there anyway. Right. Okay, now you got the red, and you got okay. the white, and you got the another white. Yeah, very okay. good. Okay. See that? Okay, now you got the look, the red above your shirt. Okay. Looking good, right? Hey, hey, Tom, I'm telling you, I'm impressed. Okay. Next, you go with your game jersey. Okay. okay. How are you going to tuck this thing in? Well, I, I will. Oh, okay. Later. All right. Yeah. For practical purposes, this is good. Okay. Now, you've got your shirt on. Yeah. Game jersey. Looking good, right? Hey, Tom, I tell you, I don't care if you go over three. Hey, doesn't matter to see, me. That's the great thing about being cool, is the fact that, you know, you don't have to be that good of a player. Yeah. Because uh, if uh, if you're cool, uh, people might say, hey, he's not very good, but God, look how good he looked in his uniform. He looks great. Very, very important. Okay. Well, then you get your hat when you're getting ready to go out for uh, for the battle, and there's different ways that guys like to uh, to wear their hats. Uh, First of all, there's the mean look, kind of the goose gossage look. You know, the goose oh, comes out there. Can't see his eyes. He's like yeah, this. Okay. He scares you half to death. To death. But it's, you know, let's face it, goose is not that cool. Yeah. Okay? And then I didn't you have, say that goose. He, he then you that. have your basic left-handers look. Britt Burns on our ball club likes to wear his hat kind of like this. And most left-handers <laughs> give you that look. Hey, left-handers aren't that cool. I'm left-handed, Tom. Take it easy but here. Okay. Cool guys kind of wear their hat. You know, tapered hair look. Yeah. They kind of... Is it important that the ears do right or don't stick out, or, or, or is that? Ears, <laughs> your ears should stick out oh, a little bit. A little bit. Not too much. <laughs> Just a little, okay. Sergi will correct that. <laughs> yeah. Okay? And then, you go out there, you get your basic equipment, go out there and be cool. Tom, that looks cool. See? Yeah. The finished product, how cool do I look? Let's see what else they have in here. Ah, page 12. Don't come to the ballpark an inning too late, because if you do, you might miss something great.
great place. But I've been to games where the players don't always do the right thing all the time. I wonder if the book covers that, too. Oh, yeah, here on page 16. Players don't always do everything right. Sometimes they mess up, both daytime and night. Uh, it's so nice being at the ballpark. Experience a little peace and quiet for a change. So serene. It's really peaceful. Woo! I think. Kind of eerie, though. You know, sometimes you might actually think you're hearing things. Weird things. You know, a lot of weird things do happen at the ballpark, especially in the stands. There's even something right here in the book about it. Page 22. Players may play, but as they all know, it is not always they who steal the show. on the field may not always be exciting, but sometimes it's not what you see, but what you hear. Oh, there, peanut pretzels!
Oh, oh excuse me. Hey, it's the Fanatic. <laughs> well, I was just reading here in the unofficial baseball handbook. W what do you mean where I got it? Not, don't worry about where I got it. I was looking here in chapter four on mascots. It says that mascots have become a very big part of baseball today. It also says uh, you're one of the best. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> so tell me, Mr. Fanatic, uh, what does it take to be a good mascot? What? What's this? Is this the uh, written law of mascots? Hmm, okay. Let's take a look. Let's see. In order to be an official mascot, one must appeal to the youngins. Okay, okay. Get along with players, managers, and umpires. Have rhythm. <laughs> and uh, possess a driver's license. You have to do all that to be a good mascot? Well, what do we do from there? Oh, okay, let's go. right down to it, the mascots around the league are just plain entertaining. And it says so right here on page 39. The fun at the park just ask those in the know. When it comes to humor, there's no better show. and pestilence for these guys. Pestilence? Yeah. I'm sure that's one subject that's not covered in the book. I think it is. What's it mean anyway? Sean, if you don't know what it means, how can you look it up? It means plague, and baseball players are plagued by all sorts of things for which, of course, they need to find remedies. Oh, I get it. Yeah. Remedies for things that players are plagued by. There, you see? Let's see here. Up oh, there, yeah. you see? Page 47. Plagued by a balk, a slump, or a bad call? 
one great play can reverse it all. the game's over, I wonder if this book has anything I want to do after the game. You betcha. Look on the last page. Yeah, yeah right yeah. there. It says, the game's over and your spirits are low, so just run the credits and end the show. That's yeah. it for us, everyone. I'm Byron Day. For Jim Scott and Sean Mooney, thanks for being with us.